Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this part, we're going to take a look at YOLO version 5. You only look once. This is a technology that lets you recognize images in a field of view. So what's very powerful about YOLO compared to other technologies is you can see that it lets you recognize images. You can do this even in streaming video. You see all the books behind me, which are totally freaking it out. Uh, see if it recognizes the red stapler. I'm not doing this in real time. I'm doing this in post. So we'll, we'll see what it comes back with. Here's, here's a phone. It lets you take these images and it recognizes multiple images inside of one big picture. I've got the code here for YOLO version 5 that we make use of in this course. I've done this video for YOLO 3 and now YOLO 5, so there's been several versions from several different sources. But 5 is the latest and seems to have the best support. There's even a corporate sponsorship here for this one as well. So that's, that's a good thing. It's all open source. So I have the link to my example notebook in the class notes in the description below. I do design this to be ran in Google Colab because you do have to install the YOLO version 5. You can't just pip install it. You have to pull it from GitHub and add it to the Python path. Not too hard. It works really pretty well. It's a pure PyTorch implementation, so that makes it easy to deal with. So it lets you recognize multiple images. You can see an image that I have here. This is me in my kitchen, and it's recognizing multiple images, drawing the boxes around them. Now to make use of YOLO in Python, you'll want to pull it from the YOLO v5 GitHub repository. I will say something on the, the versions of, of YOLO. The original YOLO was by Joseph Redman who was a researcher who created YOLO 1, 2, and 3. He even got a TED Talk um, out of this, so it was, it was pretty cool. But he, he apparently moved on from computer vision, not his area anymore. And the startup company Alterix, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, now maintains it. And they they published a paper on their improvements to the original YOLO. So I have moved on from the original Joseph Redman version to the latest and greatest for this course. And this is what this is an update video for. So here you can see some of the code that we're going to make use of. I pull an example image down. So if you have, if you're running this in Colab, you can put this URL in here. This is my Jeff's Kitchen video and it, it will recognize multiple images in there. Put any URL you want to in there, and it, you can pull it down and attempt to recognize images in it. But first, you'll have to install YOLO version 5. You'll see that I do a get clone. Then we move into that directory. Notice it's a percent instead of a bang or an exclamation point. That's because exclamation point runs it just in the shell, whereas the percent runs it for the entire Jupyter. So just running it in, doing a change directory with a bang doesn't have really any lasting effect. So that lets us be able to then do the pip install directly from the directory that we've moved into. Since we moved into that directory, we're able to import YOLO v5. We'll see another way to import it in a moment, but for now that, that works fine. We can check it just to see if it's available. You can see it is detecting the two CPUs on my Colab environment, and it also detects the GPU that I have available also in Colab. You do want to have a GPU for optimal performance on this. And just to kick it off, I'm going to run it from the command line. So I'm going to run python detect.py weights YOLO 5S, so we're transferring in weights that this was pre-trained on by the authors of YOLO v5. The image width is going to be 640, so I'm scaling it down a bit. The, um, con the minimum constance is 0 0.25, so you can increase that, decrease that, that determines the number of false hits that you get. Uh, hopefully it gets you also more uh, true positives as well. So you run this, 
and it, it installs everything, and it runs the detection. You'll notice, too, that it tells me kind of what it detected. One person, one dog, two bottles, one bowl, one microwave, two ovens. I actually don't have two ovens. It thinks that my dishwasher is an oven, but it only gets to see a little bit of it. Don't have two sinks either. Well, there's two sides to it, so maybe that's what it, what it means. So there is the classification, and this is it putting the labels directly onto there. So you'll see the microwave, the oven. Usually when you're dealing with this, you're going to want to just get the labels and the bounding boxes in code so that you can then write your own program to take advantage of what this is doing. So in addition to running it just from the command line, you can run it in Python. And this is what you'll need to be able to do for one of the assignments in this class, because I make you count the number of images the number of things, items, inside of an image and track that over a day. So this shows you how to actually do this in Python. You'll see here I am adding content YOLO v5, which is where we downloaded it. I'm adding that into the Python path. That lets me be able to import it just like a normal import, and I don't have to change directory. I'm no longer dependent on what the current directory is. And then I initialize it just like before, it detects what GPU I have and all that fun stuff, just like before. Now we're going to download an image to classify that I'm basically using the, uh, the, the Jeff's Kitchen video or image that I had in there from before, just kind of a fun image, at least for me. And then we do all of the imports that are necessary to make this this actually work. I can probably remove some of these some of these imports. I don't think I'm using quite every one, but it won't hurt to to have those in there. And then we actually initialize it and bring it online. So we do select a device, we select no device, which means detect it. So it's going to find the GPU that we have. These are the weights that we're using. We are not scaling the image any at all. If it's a very high resolution image, we're, we're going to YOLO it at the higher res. We then do the other code necessary to bring this online. And I display the original image size and then the final image size that YOLO is forcing me to conform to. Because YOLO does require it to be a multiple of 32 based on the stride size that the neural network was trained on. Strides are just how far across the convolution neural networks that this is based on actually chunk things. We have to do some processing with the image. Now, this is just a mess in computer vision. There's so many different ways that images are represented. And I'm not talking JPEG, PNG. I'm talking, is it row major? Is it column major? Do they talk about width and height, height and width? Uh, they can put it in all sorts of, of orders. OpenCV does it one way. TensorFlow does it another, PyTorch does it another. We're dealing with PyTorch here. So you have four dimensions. You have the batch size. So if you're sending 32 images at a time, then there's going to be 32 of these. Then inside for each image, then you have the number of channels. That's typically three for red, green, and blue. One if you're dealing with grayscale. And then height and then width. So this is... This is kind of a strange order for me to really deal with because height is generally your, your y, width is generally your x, but those, you don't say height, you don't say height by width. You talk about a 640 by 480 size screen, so that's kind of backwards of that, and then channels comes before everything, so you've got essentially three different images, kind of like how Photoshop does it really of each of those channels. So the channels are kept completely different. It's not, it's not a matrix of three-dimensional pixels like you often see. We're using PIL to actually load the image. And then we, we do the basic, well, we warm up the neural network so it's ready for the size that it's going to be dealing with. We set the threshold confidence. And then we basically create the image. So since it's height versus width, we have to flip these two around to deal with the way that PyTorch wants things. And then we, we, we basically then 
divide everything by 255 to get it in the range of zero to one, and we permute it. So this says the batch comes first, then the channel, then the height, and then the width. So that's just taking basically those columns and rows that we had, because from pill, it just had this part. It had the channels, and not in that order either, because the channels come last. But it didn't have the zero at the beginning. The zero was added from this, uh, this unsqueeze, and that gives it the extra, the fourth dimension, well, the first dimension for the batch size. And then this whole thing results in your image. So that's a very PyTorch statement of resolution, one by three by 320 by 256. Okay, now that we've got the image converted into the right form, we're going to actually call the model. We're gonna do predictions, we're gonna pass in the image raw, we're not aug augmenting, and we're not visualizing. This is low level, this is in Python. We're just doing this so that we can potentially feed this into some sort of a security camera that's waiting for a person to walk by. Then what we're going to do is get the predictions that we have back and we're going to loop through them and convert them into more of a processable form. So we're going to scale the co coordinates on each of these down to or up to whatever the original source image was. So if we took the original source image and we compressed it so that YOLO could work with it for performance purposes, we blow those coordinates back out so that you can draw those squares around something on the original high-res image. And I will say this code is all based on the detect.py that they give you from YOLO version five, but I took it, stripped out everything that did not have anything to do with actually calling this from Python. And this is the minimal set of what you would want to do to, to make use of it in a Python program. Then we're gonna loop over X, Y, X, Y. So that's basically, how are those rectangles? Is it the X and Y of the top left and then the X and Y of the bottom right, which is what it does come back in. But you might want that in, uh, X, X, Y with height, and this convert it, set to X, Y with height. So whatever you want coming back, put it here. I have it as X, Y, X, Y, because that's the easiest for me to plot. You get the results back, and you'll see you have a bottle, an oven, a sink, and then the coordinates of where those were each, each at. So I have all of those, and then just to check those, to make sure that they are correct, I plot little boxes just around the original image and kind of reproduce what they, they had at the top, except I didn't bother to print the labels out. This is really just a check to show that it is processing that correctly. So in assignment six, you're going to have the ability, or the opportunity, I should say, to do this on some other images, and you're going to count up the types of objects that are in each of those images. Thank you for watching this video, and if you're interested in artificial intelligence, machine learning, computer vision, this kind of stuff, please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss the rest of this course. Thank you very much.